Joyce, we've just come off stage. <sighs> Done a two hour well, play. Well, especially you, yeah, <laughs> two and a half. <laughs> um, first of all, I want to find out when did you come to Canada? 50 years ago. We, we sort of loved Canada ahead of time because when we were in the States, we lived in northern cities across the country and we listened to the CBC and we were you know, regular CBC listeners and when we were in Fargo, North Dakota, the Canadian players came and Douglas Campbell yes. and Bruno Gerussi and they did St. Joan and Pure Ghent on tour in the 50s and we thought, I just thought it was wonderful. So I was prepared, I was prepared to like Canada mostly because of those two big experiences. Who played St. Joan? I can't remember. That's terrible. <laughs> Franny Highland. I was just going to say it was yeah, a Francis. I'll bet. I got my equity card when I was 19 because I'd been in two, sum, two professional summer stock companies in the States. I really, went, from then on, I was never in a city that had a professional theater until Calgary in the late 60s began to to have one. And what was that? Theater Calgary. That was the first one. Who ran that? Uh, well, John Hirsch came to town in the early 60s and he had managed to get the Manitoba Theater Center to be a professional company. And he, he, was, he was really a, a prophet and a proselytizer. And he came and he said, you can do that too if you really want to. And everybody really wanted to. So we all, in various ways, worked hard to get that. And what led to Theatre Calgary was a theatre called Musicians and Actors Company, the MAC-14. And it was uh, only for about three or four years, but it was in an old movie theatre on, on First Street. You know where the Palliser is? Mm -hmm. And then you look south and you see St. Mary's Church at the end? Well, it was a couple, three, maybe three blocks down on First Street from the Palliser. And it was an old movie theatre. and. Uh, Don Boys, who had been an ice skater, but he was a theater person too, he took, I don't know, I, I, I don't know exactly the details, but he got hold of that theater and he started to fix it up. And he made a club in the basement, which well, I said to my husband, this is really dangerous because it was such a neat place that you, I just knew I would probably want to spend too much time there. And then he fixed up the upstairs, and the first play that he did was uh, Taste of Honey. With I don't know if you ever knew Judith Drynan. She was around a while for a long time ago. And uh, they, they, did more, they did more edgy plays than Calgary had, had been seeing. And people were drawn to that company. Calgary had lots of very good amateur companies uh, when I arrived. Everybody said, you, don't worry. Yeah, there's plenty of theater. There are so many different companies. Just look around and see who's doing what you like to do and join. So I looked around and mostly, uh, well, there were companies doing Broadway musicals. There were companies doing British comedies. There were companies doing sort of a, a mix of classical and Broadway and British. And that I wasn't really, at that time, I was really in love with the UNESCO and Beckett and uh, that kind of thing. And I wanted to know more how to do it. So I just started doing it, you know, myself. A bit more theater of the absurd? Yeah, for a while, because I, I thought the only way to learn how to do this is to do it. And at the MAC, one of the, uh, um, one of the plays I directed was um, uh, American Dream, uh, Albee's American Dream, and I did The Caretaker, and uh, a more popsy play that did really well was I, I directed The Knack, and uh, that in it was Michael Ball, Sharon Pollock, and Bob Haley, and Jim Eberly, and it won the Dominion Drama Festival when we still didn't have it. The Mac was not a professional theater, so the Mac Mac put the Mac put the Knack in the Dominion Drama Festival, and it won. <laughs> And uh, that was kind of a turning point for uh, several of us. Michael Ball and Sharon Pollock; these people weren't. They, well, they were brought. Yet, they were brought. They, they were brought to Calgary by Victor Mitchell, who was the first head of the drama department at the University of Calgary. 
And he had taught Michael Ball as a high school student. So when he started this department, he knew that at first he wouldn't have enough people to do, to do the shows he wanted to do. So he got some kind of a grant or a salary for Michael to come and teach some of the acting classes. And when Michael came, of course, he brought Sharon and the kids. And that made a huge difference in Calgary. And the first play that was produced at the University Theatre to open it, it's a thrust stage, sort of modeled after Stratford. The first play was Valpone, with uh, Michael playing Tosca. <laughs> Tosca, Mosca, Mosca. And um, Sharon wasn't writing plays yet. She was, she was an actress and a mother. <laughs> so, um, the, you know, there were a lot of times when the, the fact that somebody came to town to work was really influential and made a big difference. But also, this long tradition of good good amateur theater in Calgary, which was it's a very high quality. So there was a, a base there. Now, the Citadel Theater in Edmonton, I think, is because of a millionaire, I mean, partly, giving money. But here in Calgary, it was harder, because we had to all, just we had to all work. Nobody gave us a lot of money. And, the, and I tell you, the Mac Theater, the I, old Isis, was not not your posh place to put on plays. But you really, as a community, had to support each other. Yeah. 